All right. So this is a crazy question. And um, I think you're at some point in this, you're probably going to want to use Desmos. At least when I look at this, I kind of start that way. And I'm just like, let me just see what happens. Maybe I can get lucky. So there's a couple things to note about the Desmos solution, and I'm going to kind of do like a hybrid, but uh, I'll, I'll show you a couple ways to, to use Desmos to our advantage here. First, I just typed in everything I've got. Um, this is the equation, and you can see nothing appears here. Uh, if I make it equal to zero, it doesn't, for whatever reason, want to provide me with a slider, but you can always just force one, right? So we can always just do the P equals, and then let's just type whatever number, and it kind of gives it to us. And now we have an equation. Now, remember, when we have an equation with one variable, which is technically what this is, because P is not a variable, it's a number, what it's doing is it's solving that equation for us. So this is not some curve that is kind of bouncing up and down. Right now, because this thing is equal to zero, this is a bunch of vertical lines. And that's providing us with the solutions. And since this has to do with solutions, it feels like we can maybe find those numbers and, and get them. But if I start to like look at these, I can't tap them. I'm trying, but it doesn't let me see what those numbers are. Now I can zoom in and some of them look nice, like negative three, that looks nice. But this one right here, that doesn't look so easy, right? So that's some sort of decimal. I'd love to be able to tap it. So here's what I'm going to do instead. If I go back to this and stop making it equal to zero and just let it be its own thing, suddenly we can see we have tappable points because what this did is it stopped it basically now is graphing it as a curve. It's a very long curve, so they still look like vertical lines, but let's see if I can zoom. Eh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, but you can kind of see, yeah, it's too much. But basically what's happening is these things are, are curving back and forth, and uh, it's allowing us to think of these not as solutions anymore, but as x-intercepts, and so they're tappable. I don't know why Desmos behaves that way, but whatever. Now, what we could try to do is say, all right, well, maybe the solutions add up, to 20 thirds, but that's a really specific number. So uh, I don't know, you play with the slider, we see it kind of moves around. And this is where I'd have my first insight into this thing, is some of these numbers are moving, right? Some of these solutions are moving around, but these two aren't, this one here and this one here. Why? Well, because one part of this equation doesn't have a P, right? So that's not gonna be affected as we adjust the value of P. So we can, kind of ignore those solutions in a way, because not only is it not affected by the P, but the two solutions that it provides are three and negative three. So if we think about summing them up, what is three plus negative three? It's zero. So this term in the middle is a wash. It doesn't do anything, so we can get rid of it. And we could have solved for it, and this is where the algebra starts to come in, is what they're asking for when we want the sum of the solutions is since this is in factored form, we basically want to set each of these factored terms equal to zero. So we could have done that with 5x squared minus 45 equals zero. We get 5x squared equals 45. We divide by five, we get x squared equals nine. But here's where most people are going to mess up. They're going to forget that they have to do positive and negative solutions for a situation like this. So it's plus or minus three. And right here is where we had the plus and minus three. They're on the graph. So yeah. You could do it the manual way and do it right, hopefully, or you can look at Desmos and, and kind of see what's going on. But the rest of this is really annoying, right? These are these are not nice numbers, right? Like negative 1.067, 1.06. If I made it this a nice number, like if I made this one, I hate when Desmos does this on the iPad. Um, I don't necessarily have nice numbers either, right? So it's kind of annoying. Plus 20 thirds isn't a really nice number, but I have a plan. Let's now focus on this piece and make that equal to zero, kind of like I did this other one, and solve for P and kind of put it in those terms. Um, so 3x plus P is going to be equal to zero. So we can subtract P, subtract P, we get 3x is equal to negative P, divide by 3, divide by 3, and now x is equal to negative P over 3. So we have one of our solutions. It's in terms of P, but eventually we can add that with the other solutions and get 20 thirds. So now let's do it for this piece. 2x squared minus 16x plus 6p equals 0. Okay, well I want to factor, so 2x squared minus 8x plus 3p equals zero, but how am I going to factor if I've got a p here? How is that going to work? Well, this is where I think that the College Board's explanation goes crazy. They kind of want us to use the quadratic formula a little bit. It's a mess. So here's where we got to be clever. 
and recognize that we do have a shortcut for the sum of the solutions when we have a quadratic. Now I know we've got other pieces of this equation, but right now I'm just focused on the quadratic and the sum of the solutions for a quadratic is negative b over a. So notice that doesn't involve the c term at all. That doesn't involve this thing with the p. It's gonna involve this two, I'm gonna go back to the beginning, and this negative 16. So the sum of the solutions is negative negative 16 over the a term, which is two. So the sum for this part is 16 over two, which is eight. So what does that mean, right? Let's bring it all together now. We've got a sum of the blue part, that's eight. That's this right here. Uh, and then we've got this part is negative p over three, which we don't know, but we know that together these two things have to equal 20 thirds. And again, we're ignoring this other piece because the three and negative three cancel out. So I'm not gonna worry about them. So now we have an equation we can solve. That's pretty easy, right? So 20 thirds is the sum of eight and negative p over three. Let's, let's fix that eight, right? Let's actually, let's just multiply, multiply everything by three. Let's do that, right? So negative P plus 24 is equal to 20, minus 24, minus 24, negative P is equal to negative four, and there we have it, P is four. That is the answer. And this gets me back to Desmos because that was complicated what I did. And, and I don't think most people are gonna be able to get that in a, in a decent amount of time. This question looks too crazy. And so I think what's gonna happen is a lot of people are just gonna play around with Desmos. Um, I would say you've gotta give yourself a cutoff and, and know that when Desmos isn't helping you, there's a point where you gotta move on to something else. Um, but, you know, four is a, is a nice number. And I do find that when SAT questions have a lot of craziness going on, the answers sometimes are really simple, right? They're integers, they're, they're even numbers, so to speak. They're whole numbers. And that allows us to maybe come back to Desmos and guess and check our way to the answer, right? So, so let's, let's think about what's going on here, right? If I had said from the get-go that P is one, and I took all these little dots, right? and I just used the ones they gave me, and I added them all up, right? I can see what that's gonna give me. So let's ignore the three and the negative three, because like we said, those are gonna cancel out. So it's just these other three that I'm interested in. So I could have gone to my calculator, and I could have said, well, what is negative 0.333 plus 0.394 plus 7.606? It's 7.667, and 20 divided by three is 6.666, right? So if we get a, um, a decimal version of this, right? 6.667. So all those added together with P equals one, I don't even know where to write this. How about here? P equals one would have been, what did I say? Seven point something, seven point something. So not quite 6.667. So we could try different numbers. We could say, all right, well, I'm gonna make P two. And now again, ignore the three and the negative three because they're gonna cancel each other out. So we'll focus on the other ones and be like, okay, when P is two, right, what do these add up to? Negative 0.667 plus 7.162 plus 0.838, and we get 7.333, right? So we could just try some numbers and, and just keep seeing what happens, and right, if we get to four, let's do it, right? This is the th negative three and the three, so we can cancel those out. Let's do this one and this one and this one. Well, six and eight, is, or six and two is eight, and then eight minus 1.333 is 6.667, what we wanted. So there is a little place to guess and check for a question like this. It's only possible because Desmos lets us change a lot of complicated numbers very quickly, very easily, by just using the slider. Um, I don't know. I don't think that that is the best solution. I think it's better to know what you're doing and, and to think about the zero product property or whatever it's called and, and try to set all of these uh, little terms equal to zero and, and kind of reason them out. But I do think that putting this in Desmos to start made me connect some, some ideas that would have been very difficult for me to do otherwise. So not a bad idea to start off that way. And, and for a lot of people, that's why Desmos is so great, is we're visual learners, some of us. And so seeing math kind of grow and change and work is really helpful. So putting it in Desmos lets us kind of come up with things that we wouldn't have come up with just staring at the question and reading it. So don't hesitate 
to put it in Desmos if you got nothing going on. Might as well see what happens. But remember what I did at the beginning, right? I had to put the slider in, but I also, in order to make those um, those uh, uh, the tappable x-intercepts appear, I had to get rid of the equal zero. Because if I do it, they're going to go away. So if I put the equal zero back, we'll get the solutions. But for whatever reason, we won't be able to just like see the numbers easily. So anyone have a better solution? Please put in the comments. Um, I'm definitely curious. This is a fun question in lots of ways, uh, but it is hard. And I am curious if anyone found some other clever thing. I think the one thing I'm most proud of here is using the uh, sum of the solutions formula rather than dealing with the actual solutions for that quadratic. It was much easier to just shortcut it and think about them as a unit. I don't need the individual solutions. I can just think of them as, um, as, uh, yeah, as, as a sum because I'm getting a sum anyway.